The 2020 NFL Draft was seen by many people as being one of the more influential drafts that we've seen in the past few years. Uh, influential not only with just pure talent coming into the league, but also influential as to how many teams will be reshaping their roster throughout these next couple of years based on this draft alone. Possibly the most influential position in the game of football, at least in terms of the NFL, is the quarterback position. And this year's class of quarterbacks was pretty solid in terms of not only first round talent, but talent throughout the draft in terms of being backups or just journeymen throughout the NFL that we're probably going to be seeing for at least a decade. And some teams picked guys who we're going to see probably soon starting, and some guy or some teams drafted quarterbacks that we're probably not going to see very often, at least in the short term. We knew some of the picks were probably going to be coming, like the Bengals taking Joe Burrow and the Dolphins taking Tua Tagovailoa, but we saw some pretty interesting moves as well, with the Philadelphia Eagles taking Jalen Hurts in the second round and the Green Bay Packers possibly finding Aaron Rodgers' successor in Jordan Love towards the end of the first round. One of the more obvious but nonetheless still very exciting moves that was made during the 2020 NFL Draft in the first round was the LA Chargers taking Justin Herbert with their number 6 overall pick. The 6'6 quarterback out of Oregon was a very smart kid who's pretty much had NFL talent since his sophomore year, it seemed like, when he was at Oregon. But even after his junior year, he decided to stay for his senior year. Uh, he was touted as probably the number one overall pick last season, and he didn't really falter too much, even though many people think that towards the end of his senior year, he kind of had a dip in his performance. Nonetheless, Justin Herbert gives the LA Chargers probably the best chance that they've had at winning a Super Bowl since LaDainian Tomlinson was his in, in his MVP form about a decade ago now. And the teams, the two teams that LA used to, I guess not just LA, but the San Diego Chargers as well, the, the two teams that they used to really run into was the Steelers when Big Ben and Troy Polamalu and that defense in Pittsburgh was really, really good. It seemed like LA or the Chargers used to run into that team a lot, as well as the New England Patriots. Those two were kind of the teams of the AFC the past 10 to 15 seasons. And now there's a new powerhouse in the AFC with, and not only just in the AFC, but in their division as well in the AFC West with Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Now that the Chargers have pretty much their future guy, it seems like it's going to be coming down to between either him or Tyrod Taylor for that week one starting position. And Anthony Lynn, the head coach of the Chargers, has already come out and said that Tyrod Taylor will more than likely, if not guaranteed, to be the week one starter for the Chargers. Um, I, I think many people forget that Easton Stick is also on this roster, but I've pretty much all but ruled out his chances of being a starter for this team. Uh, but nonetheless, the Chargers have their future guy. They have a reason to have hope again, and they haven't really had that the past almost three to four seasons. This is going to be the Chargers' first season out of the Phillip Rivers era, and it's an era that, although it didn't produce a Super Bowl, I think many fans would be happy with what Phillip Rivers did for this team. He's easily a Hall of Fame quarterback first ballot, and he kept his team competitive. You know, he played at a Hall of Fame level, maybe... You could say maybe he played at a Hall of Fame level too early as, you know, the guys that he got surrounded with towards the last couple years of his Chargers era, guys like Hunter Henry, Mike Williams, Keenan Allen. Now this defense for the Chargers is becoming probably top five level uh, with what they've got in the secondary and in the pass rush. But now that Justin Herbert is more than likely going to be the guy going forward, they have a very good chance to gain the success that I think many Chargers fans have had hopes for in the past five to ten years. As great of a starter as Tyrod Taylor is, and I I hate to say it, but I don't know if he gives the Chargers the potential that Justin Herbert gives the Chargers in terms of being able to win a Super Bowl. Tyrod Taylor has shown the ability to take a team to the playoffs with the Buffalo Bills. I mean, he practically put that team on his back as well as the defense for that team led them to a playoff uh, appearance a couple years ago. And I still, I do feel a little bit bad for Tyrod Taylor because he was rewarded with that. He was rewarded after that season where he took them to the playoffs. He was 
replaced by Josh Allen. Or, excuse me. He was replaced by Nathan Peterman. And then he was replaced by Josh Allen. So, after taking a team to the playoffs, he got replaced. And then he went to Cleveland where he was replaced by Baker Mayfield. Whether you want to say that was a good move or not, whatever. And now he's in L.A. where he sat behind Phillip Rivers for a year. And the Chargers are already bringing in probably the replacement for Tyrod Taylor. And again, I don't want to say that Tyrod Taylor is a bad quarterback. He is not a bad quarterback by any stretch of the imagination. It's just that where the league is right now, where you have guys like Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson and Aaron Rodgers, you need a guy who is going to light up the scoreboard. And maybe Justin Herbert won't be able to light up the scoreboard as much as Patrick Mahomes in his first year. I think even that, if he's halfway to what his potential is, I think that that is probably better than what the Chargers will be able to get out of Tyrod Taylor. And again, I don't mean any disrespect to Tyrod Taylor. It's just that's how I view this team at this point. Justin Herbert is going into a season where I've drawn a lot of comparisons between him and his first season with the Chargers to Russell Wilson with his first year with the Seahawks. You look at Russell Wilson when he came in with the Seahawks. Obviously, it's a different draft scenario. Russell Wilson was taken in the third round. Justin Herbert was the number six overall pick. Obviously, those are two different things. But when you look at the defenses that are in that's in L.A. right now and was in Seattle when Russell came in, you've got lockdown corners with Richard Sherman and Brandon Browner in Seattle. And now you've got, in L.A., you've got Casey Hayward and Chris Harris. You've got two dynamic elite safeties. In Seattle, you had Earl Thomas and you had Cam Chancellor. Now in L.A., you've got probably Desmond King is going to be that free safety, but then opposite him, you have Derwin James. And then you have, an, you have a great pass rush with, in L.A. right now, you've got guys like Jerry Tillery, Limval Joseph, Joey Bosa, Melvin Ingram. And in Seattle, you had guys like Michael Bennett, Red Bryant, Bruce Irvin. You had a lot of guys. You There's a lot of comparisons between those two defenses. And another comparison is they're going to be bringing in... LA's going to be bringing in a young linebacker to lead this defense with Kenneth Murray, which is a move I'm really excited about as well as the Justin Herbert move for quarterback. When I initially had my first mock draft of this season, I said something about how Kenneth Murray, you know, playing for an awful defense and for Oklahoma, when you're playing for an awful defense, someone has to make the tackles. Someone has to be the name that gets all those stats. But when you put Kenneth Murray in a Chargers uniform, you aren't making him the leader. He's most likely going to be the fifth, sixth guy you look at on that defense when it comes to being a leader or taking control of what the defense does. Obviously, guys like Joey Bosa, Chris Harris, Casey Hayward, Derwin James, Desmond King, there's all pros and pro bowlers all over this defense to where if Kenneth Murray is your worst player on your defense, you have possibly the greatest defense we've seen in the past decade. And with the Chargers having that great of a defense, it makes Justin Herbert's job almost as easy as possible. Because now he goes in with an elite defense, possibly a top five defense in the league next season. Barring any injuries, hopefully, you know, Derwin James is fully recovered from his injury. He played the last few games of last season, but hopefully no one else gets injured. Hopefully everyone stays healthy for the whole 16 game season. But not only does he have the elite defense, he's got an elite duo of wide receivers with Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. He's got a great young tight end with Hunter Henry. He's got a great dynamic duo. I don't think many people really remember Justin Jackson for the uh, for the Chargers, but they've got him as well as Austin Eckler, and they also drafted uh, Joshua Kelly. I forget what college he's from, but they drafted him as well, and they really retooled this offensive line. They traded Russell Okung, who they still kind of have to figure out what they're going to do with the left tackle spot, but from left guard to right tackle, they've kind of got that whole offensive line intact. They traded for Trey Turner. They signed Brian Bulaga in free agency. They have Mike Pouncey at center. And that left guard, they have got, they've got the, uh, I believe he's in his third or fourth year with uh, Dan Feeney. So they really just need to figure out that left tackle position, which that could be the downfall of them if they don't figure it out. But I think it'll they'll probably be able to survive. With everything being said, this leads me to my, 
this leads me to the general point of what this video is about, and that's about why Justin Herbert will be the most successful quarterback in this draft class. And I don't just mean successful in terms of putting up stats. I don't mean successful in terms of winning Super Bowls or whatever. I mean successful in terms of putting both of those things together, both being a winning quarterback and having amazing statistics. He's, again, he's kind of in a Russell Wilson year where, you know, the Seahawks, another comparison, Seahawks brought in a veteran quarterback, Matt Flynn, who has been a backup his whole career and had two or three games for the Packers where he was great. And I'm not saying Tyrod Taylor is exactly like Matt Flynn, but they're kind of similar in terms of being backup quarterbacks for a majority of their career. Tyrod Taylor obviously has started for three full seasons, but again, similarities. They're going to go into training camp, Tyrod Taylor and Justin Herbert, and they're going to battle it out. And possibly Justin Herbert can come out on top as the number one quarterback. But there's no reason to believe that after this season, if Justin Herbert isn't the starting quarterback at some point, through this season he's going to be the starting quarterback after this season and he's gonna have an amazing career because he's got a young 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 defense behind him backing him that's gonna be behind him for probably at least three to his first three to four years of his career and if that leaves him by that point he should have taken the leap into becoming not only a good NFL starter, but an elite player in the league, possibly even a top 10 quarterback in the NFL, backed by a dynamic wide receiver duo, a great young tight end, and a solid offensive line. I know many people look at Justin Herbert and don't see him as a really A-type leader. Uh, He's kind of an introvert, but if he's going to this team, he that that's perfect. Because there's already a lot of personalities. And I'm not saying that adding another personality at the quarterback position would be a bad thing. I'm just saying it seems like he would fit in perfectly with this team, with this system. And what the culture in LA for the Chargers is looking like at this point. And even though there's going to be pressure, there's always pressure for any young quarterback going to a new team. But pressure in LA for the Chargers is almost non-existent when you look at the teams that are in LA I'd say the Rams are in front of them the Dodgers obviously the Lakers the Clippers even teams that aren't in LA I feel like get more media coverage than than the Chargers do I mean they play in a soccer stadium for they've played in a soccer stadium for what three years now they get no attention in LA really pretty much non-existent so his pressure inside his hometown is almost not going to be there. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of pressure, but compared to what other quarterbacks like Tua or maybe even Jordan Love or Joe Burrow are going to go through in their first season, he's not going to be anywhere near that. Like I said, Tua and Joe Burrow, they pretty much both have the expectations of completely flipping their team's history around and completely saving their franchise. That's not where Justin Herbert is with the Chargers. He's just kind of going to have to be there to keep the ship afloat. And again, he should have an easy job going into this season. If he's the backup for the first few games, then that's fine. But once he takes the starting role, he should have a somewhat easy job because he will have an elite defense behind him. He has an elite, really elite offense that he's going to be taking control of. And he's got a good head coach kind of calling the shots for his team so with all of that being said that's going to be the video from me Uh, i hope you guys liked it if you did make sure you hit the like button if you didn't like it then hit the dislike button uh any any feedback from you guys is really needed at this point Uh, i do want to say real quick i know it's this has been my first video in over a month so hopefully getting back to some sort of a not schedule, but getting some sort of flow going with these videos again is really what I'm hoping for. Um, But anyways, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day or night whenever you're watching this, and hopefully I see you guys in the next video. Make sure you, again, like or dislike whatever, however you felt about this video. If there's anything you think I forgot about, go ahead and leave it in the comments below, and make sure you subscribe to see all of my content when it comes out. Uh, Again, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day or night, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.